All right, let's get rolling with our first article, which is about Neuralink. And this topic was suggested by Matt Hardman from Instagram. So thank you, Matt, for bringing this topic up. It's a really interesting one. Um, basically, Neuralink, it's a Elon Musk company. Elon Musk is the CEO. And their elevator pitch and of their device, which they call the Link, their elevator pitch for the Link is that they want to solve brain and spine-related illnesses by integrating the link, which is a neural interface device with your brain. So they cut a hole in your skull, put a small coin sized device in there and it interfaces with your brain. So you've got a computer basically as part of your body. So if, if I, if I remember correctly, I think it was like 2010, 2012, where uh, some researcher demonstrated this technology with a patient that had like spinal injury and they connected a device to her mind that could control like a robotic arm. So like this isn't like new tech, right? No, the the tech has existed for a while. You're right, like 2012, that was a landmark study in being able to control a robotic arm with the brain. Right. But what Neuralink is doing, what I would say, like in a nutshell, is it's not new, but it's way better. Um, their device has 1,024 channels. That's over 100 times more than any other existing product on the market today. And what does more channels um, mean? Just like higher sensitivity or? It basically gives them a more complete picture of the you know neural impulses that are going on Got in it. the brain um imagine it's like having a hundred times more pixels in the display that you're looking at okay um they also have wireless inductive charging which is nice because like if i had this device in my head i wouldn't have want to have to like plug my head in at night um it's got a small form factor so you know it's already going to be pretty invasive they're cutting a hole in your spine but this is you know the way We'll go into describing the procedure a little bit. It's not as invasive as it could be because the device is small. Honestly, you had me at the, uh, until the cutting a hole in your head. It sounded yeah, good until yeah. then. Yeah. Um, it's mass produced. So they say it'll be cheaper, like okay. around the price of buying a smartphone, which is really weird to think like That's integrating a computer with yeah. your brain. It costs as much as a cell phone. And they also boast that this process will be completely reversible. So like, sweet. say I get it in my head. I don't like it anymore. I can get it taken out and it apparently I'll go back to life just like I never had it with no issue. Um, How are they proving that? Like, have they tested on human beings already? So they did a demonstration in 2020 with pigs. Um, okay. And they basically had one pig that had never had the device, one pig that still had the device in its brain and one of them that had it implanted and then removed. And all three pigs were healthy and behaved the same. So that was kind of them giving a demo that, you know, hey, this is, the process is completely reversible and it won't harm you. Um, the procedure by which they put it in, I think we should talk about that a little bit. They don't need any general anesthesia. Nice. So they don't have to put you under. Again, like it's going to be invasive because they're doing brain surgery, but it's not that invasive. And this is them describing why. They can do it in under an hour. You're released from the hospital the same day. That's super um, promising, man. They've got this cool technology that allows them to implant all these 1,024 wires in your brain without hitting anything important, nice. without causing any long-term damage. It sounds really promising. So I'm going to hit you with the catch. Um, okay. And it makes me a little uncomfortable. I imagine it'll make you uncomfortable for Bode. The way that they want to do this is completely robotic. No human intervention whatsoever. Uh, they just have a robot okay. cut a hole in your head, put these wires in your brain, and then stitch you up. And, you know, you're in and out in under an hour, but a robot does any, does everything. Like, we talked about this when discussing the the hollow lens assisted surgery. I think it was like episode six or something. I'm cool with that. Like, you bring in some tech. There's still, like, human involvement just to make sure, like, there's more accuracy, human and technology combining, cobot, all that good stuff. When everything is done with a robot, that makes me feel uneasy because, like, what what if there's some software error? What if there's some bug? What if there's, like, something that comes up and there's no human there to intervene and stop it? I'm not cool with that. Well, they've used the robotic system on the pigs. That's, like, one demonstration okay. of how it's feasible. They, I also imagine and I hope and I trust that they will test this thoroughly before doing it in any humans as well. I'm sure they so, will. You know... Maybe it's just, you know, a landmark at some point in the future will realize that robots are better at surgery than humans. And that's basically why they justify it. Um, the amount of dexterity that you need to put all these 1,024 channels without cutting a huge hole in your head, they say that the only way you can do this is with a robot. So that that, um, that kind of makes sense because you're taking out the human error portion of it, right? You're yeah. ensuring you know, accuracy. A robot's hand doesn't shake at all. Right. You're not going to cause any damage to the brain or put one of these wires in like, slightly the wrong spot 
Um, they can do it accurately, they can do it consistently, and they can do it without harming you. And they say the only way they can do that is with robots. So that makes sense, yeah. Maybe it's just like a mental barrier. Maybe it's like something we need to like get over. Maybe it's, I don't know. I don't know. I just feel Maybe. uneasy. It, I still feel weird about it too. Yeah. But so the, the motivations for this, the applications, I think are probably one of the most important parts to talk about. The really noble, at least one half of it. Um, they basically say that they can solve most neurological illnesses, um, things that are memory related, like Alzheimer's and, uh, you know, dementia, memory loss. They can solve that. Um, they can also solve like neural and locomotive type things like um, your Parkinson's disease, essential tremors. They say that they can solve that. And then also an interesting one um, that isn't degenerative, but say like you get in a really bad accident, you have a spinal injury. They also say that they can help with that. Wait, how? Because um, isn't it just like an implant in your brain? How's that going to help if like you have spinal injury and the impulses are just aren't reaching your legs or like, I don't know. Yeah, well, so if you get a really bad spinal injury, basically what happens is let's call point A your brain and point B the muscles that you're supposed to move. Um, the main pathway by which neural impulses travel from your brain to your muscles when your brain tells the muscles to move, the main pathway, the highway by which they transport is along your spine. So if the spine is broken, there's a discontinuity between point A and point B. Your brain could be sending the signals for your muscles to move, but your muscles would never receive those signals. Okay. What they say they'll be able to do with the link is have one device in your brain that's receiving the signals that they're trying to send to your muscles and then have another device, you know, at point B, at the muscles that are sending the same signals that your brain was sending out but couldn't get there because of the spinal injury. So it's like the spinal equivalent of like bypass surgery, whereas instead of blood you're just making sure there's another path for neuron impulses yeah and they gotcha. so you know at point a they've got this one device and then they transmit it wirely to wirelessly to the second device which outputs the pulses got it so I, I know i asked before but are there any human trials coming up soon so they did these pig trials like we were talking about in 2020 which is actually pretty significant in that that's usually the last step that you do in like any type of like biomedical device trials before you go to clinical human trials. And so human trials are coming up in 2021. Um, they, after doing the FDA or after doing the pig demonstration, they got an FDA authorization to proceed forward with human trials. So I imagine they're doing some R and D in the tech, hopefully testing out, making sure everything's fully fleshed. And then sometime later this year, they'll be doing human trials with the link device. I'm definitely in that gray area. Like I, I see the benefits and it sounds so, so promising for people like with spinal injuries, like my uncle, you know, he, he, he suffered an accident that left him with some spinal injuries like six years ago. So imagining something like this for him that could make his life so much better or the millions of people having mental illnesses that they're dealing with. I see the promise, but I'm still in that, you know, gray area of I don't know if I'm comfortable with a Black Mirror episode literally happening to me right now. Yeah, I mean, the the at some point down the road, they're basically talking about integrating everyone's brain with AI, um, which yeah. does sound really Black Mirror-esque. Um, and at least on my end, I'll tell you, you know, it, if you're asking whether you'll catch me in the lines for clinical trials in 2021, it's a no way from me at this point. 